I'm gonna create some water. The big thing is just make sure you're getting more and more comfortable with your tablet. Always reminding, I draw with my right hand. I use my left hand, I don't know if you can hear that, um, on my computer with my keyboard. So you're really using two hands. Both hands are doing very different things. The more you do it, the better you're gonna get. All right, so we're gonna create a new, and I am going to make it, I just work in inches. I'm gonna make it 11 inches wide by 8.5 high, 300 resolution. I, I want it to be landscape. We're gonna do an underwater scene over the next few weeks. I'm gonna do a transparent background, that's fine. And I'm gonna leave everything else the way it is and I'll hit create. All right, so now I have just my basic setup. This is where I like to usually go in and do like a save as. Uh, depending on which version of Creative Suite you're working in, you'll get kind of a different, um, I'll call this scene two because I've already done one. Save it to your correct folder. I like to save at that point, not when I'm doing the setup because sometimes the setup doesn't really indicate where you're saving it right off the bat. And I just think this is a safer way of doing it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna name this layer background. And we're gonna give it a kind of basic gradient of underwater. So over in our tools panel, I'm gonna change the foreground color to like a lighter blue. It's kind of up to you exactly which color you're picking. I like that, it has a slight aqua. And then your background color, I'm gonna make a very deep blue. This does need to be a very deep dark blue color. All right, so there's my two colors. I'm gonna come over to under your paint bucket and you've got your gradient tool. A few things you can notice up in your uh, control panel, you can change the gradient to either be linear or radial, a whole lot of other things that I don't necessarily use these three, but I definitely use linear and radial a lot. I'm gonna swap it over to radial and we're gonna do kind of some lighting like it was in the upper left hand of the composition. And I'm gonna click hold, drag down to the bottom using my tablet. Easy, right? And it gives just a little bit of an underwater scene, which is nice. Okay. The next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna make a little bit of a water texture. This is gonna be a trick using a cloud. So I'm gonna call this water texture. Now I'm gonna swap back to having a white foreground and a black background. You're gonna go up to filter, render, clouds. I know that seems weird because we're doing water, but this is a great trick. Okay, so they look kind of funny, right? I'm gonna kind of minimize, I'm doing command minus with my left hand and just to be able to back up a little bit. And now what you wanna do is edit and we're gonna transform. We're gonna use perspective. And now you're gonna pull out the edges and lift up kind of what we're doing. You're gonna play around with it a little bit. This gets a little tricky. I kind of want about that size. And I know it still looks funny, but it will transform into something really cool shortly. And then I'm gonna pinch these even more. I definitely want that perspective of like this closer, I know it doesn't look like it yet, is the bigger scale and further back into space is gonna be the smaller scale. So this kind of works for me. I'm gonna hit return. Next, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna change this layer to soft light. So you gotta scroll down and find soft light. Now look at your screen. Already, just from normal black and white clouds to soft light, it automatically starts looking kind of like the bottom of water. Then I'm gonna add a mask, right? Because I don't want this sharp line. So I'm gonna quickly add a mask, grab my paint uh, brush and make sure I have black. 
Uh, black is going to hide, white is going to show. Uh, I also have a splattery fun brush. So I'm gonna go back up and get a soft brush. Make sure you have a nice soft brush and black. I'm gonna leave my opacity up right now because all I'm trying to do is soften this edge and this is a trick I do. So I use my brackets. Right bracket makes my brush bigger. Left bracket makes my brush smaller. About this size. So I have mine set to about 700. And I'm gonna paint across this bottom just a little bit, soften that edge. Like right away I'm taking off the edge. And then I'm gonna come and make it a little bigger, turn down my opacity just a little bit more and give it a couple of swipes for more realistic. Now look how much more realistic that water already looks, like water, with just that trick of doing clouds. Okay, hit save, I do command S, shortcut. All right, so we have those two layers and we've created our water texture. Next, we're going to create some bubbles and then we'll finally finish it with some light rays. Bubbles are fun. This is something I'm definitely a little newer to, so you're gonna go up to File, New. I don't make custom brushes all the time. I'm usually painting pretty standard paint styles. So we're gonna set up a 500 by 500 pixel section just for now and resolution and a transparent background and hit create you're gonna have a square when you're done I'm gonna go over here and use my ellipse marquee and what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up one single bubble as a mask and then later on we're gonna show that bubble Oop, I'm gonna deselect because I want it to be a little bit more centered I know you can barely see those dancing ants, but they're there. And we're gonna dump black paint into that on our layer. Ooh. Paint, black, hit Command D, and we're gonna add a mask. Next, we're gonna grab our paintbrush again, and now we're gonna paint some of this out. This is gonna feel really funny. You're kind of doing like the inverse of what this is gonna look like. So notice how I'm painting black and it's making it see-through. Good, that's what we want. I want it pretty see-through. I have a pretty big brush right now, which is fine. Okay, I want a little bit of an edge. Next, swap back to white and we are gonna get a much smaller brush and we're gonna, if the lighting was coming from the upper left, we're gonna do a little bit of a highlight and a little bit of reflective light. So this is gonna look kind of funny, but I'm gonna paint white back onto here. And white in here. Oh, that got a little too much. I don't want quite that much. More like that. And you don't get to have quite as much control over like details with this mask you'll see in the next steps. So this is good enough as is. Once you're done with that, I'm gonna go up to, oh, before you can do that, notice how I'm selected on my mask. You need to just select the layer in general or you won't be given this option, but go up to edit and then define brush. And we're gonna call this bubble brush. Mm, Brenda, you can put your name, whatever. This is gonna help me because I have a whole bunch of brushes in there. Okay. I'm gonna also go in, I'm gonna save this in case I ever wanted to change it. Water, see I already have a bubble brush, I'll call this too, and save, hit okay. So I'm gonna go back, at this point you can close this file, that's fine. I'm gonna go back to my underwater scene and now notice what already started to populate. So I have a lot of bubbles in here. So here's my one that's specifically called Brenda. And I wanna be on that, if you don't see it, just scroll all the way down. It should be the last one in your list. But if you were to use it right now, it looks really weird. Oops, I was painting in the wrong layer. Right, that's not good. So we wanna go and kind of define it and scatter it. And the way you do that is you go up to Window, Brush Settings, and you've got a bunch of different brush settings. So I'm gonna click on this, Dynamic. Some of this, you'd have to just test. You wouldn't necessarily know exactly what you were doing. 
Um, but you can, you know, look at the lesson and see what you're kind of doing. But I want it to be very jittered. You know, if you try them, I don't want them to all be the same. I want them to be very different. I do want some of that, which gives them a little bit of um, change in their direction. And that's fine for me. Light could be popping in from other areas, especially Hell Notion. Roundness would be fine. And I do want to do flip and flip. That just gives it even more variety. Scatter is going to be a pretty important one. Um, you're going to both axis and you are going to make, look immediately start seeing how it's bubbles now. That's like kind of the biggest. And because of all the settings with the shape and the size, that's how we get it to look like lots of little bubbles. Um, and then count jitter, let's see. Yep, we wanna just kinda of get it nice and thinned out. Okay, so that looks good. So now, using your atmospheric perspective, you are going to paint in three layers of bubbles. Furthest layer is going to be in your background, much smaller bubbles. The opacity is going to be turned down a lot. Your mid layer, the opacity will be a little bit brighter, a little bit bigger bubbles. Then your foreground layer, it'll have the brightest bubbles and the largest bubbles, just like that atmospheric perspective that we've learned. So starting off with our layer, we're going to call this background bubbles. And you kind of got to play. It gets funny at first. And you also have to change this over to white. You don't want to have a black bubble. You want to have a white one. And just notice when I start, that's me dragging it. I'm at 400, and this is the size of the bubbles. So I'm going to undo. And you may have to play just a little bit. Let's go down to 50. And that gives us a nice little bubble. But I don't want to drag it and get a ton. I want to kind of sprinkle. Whoop. My keyboard got stuck. Undo. Undo. I kind of want to sprinkle these in. So I'm sort of tapping and just barely dragging. But notice, I mean, I've done this many times and I still had to kind of refresh my hand on what I was doing. Good. Whoop. My keyboard keeps getting stuck, so I'm just undo, not a big deal, or my tablet. And I'm not necessarily avoiding the center, I'm just not adding a ton to the center. Okay, that looks pretty good. I am now, what's a good trick is I'm gonna turn this to a smart object. I know you can't see that, but it's here in this rollout, convert to smart object. And now I can add a blur just a little bit. Cause remember as things get further, they're less crisp. And if I didn't want that blur to be there, I could, um, easily take it off. And actually, I want to undo a few steps because I don't think it gave me the right blur that I wanted. Convert to smart object and go back up blur. Make sure you pick the right one. And there we go. And I don't want a ton, and you can see it happening in the background, but that's pretty good. And I'm gonna turn down the opacity, right? Because so the further away, it's not about the opacity for these. These are bubbles though, so you'd be able to see through them. It's more about being able to see more of the blue of the water and them being less crisp. And if I wanted to, because I made it a smart object, I could turn off this filter instead of applying it directly to that layer. So that's just a good way of being able to edit again. All right, so you're gonna repeat this a couple more times. This one's going to be mid bubbles. I'm going to turn it up much bigger. This time we're going to go about 200 and test it. Oh yeah, perfect. Add some bubbles. Turn down the opacity a little bit. Mm. 
we'll say about 50% and then turn it to a smart object or convert it to a smart object so that I can add that filter and not mess up my main layer if I ever wanted to adjust that filter. We do not want it to be as much as the background layer, right? That wouldn't be good atmospheric perspective. So just a little bit. Hit OK. Nice. Look at that depth. Like these bubbles definitely are more forward than these. All right, almost done. Foreground bubbles. Beef that brush up. You know, I'm telling you numbers, but you'd have to test these in reality. I'm barely tapping my um, pen, my tablet pen to the tablet to get these. And if you get something you don't like, just undo. It's not a huge deal. You can always redo. And then the best part is, so, and I still am gonna, you know, turn this down just a little bit. It's still bubbles, not a lot. And if you get too much, you can always mask. Make sure you're using a regular brush when you're masking it. And black, and like, see, so you didn't want all of these bubbles, which is no big deal. Just mask some of them out. You wanted some of the large bubbles, but not all of them. And then you could always paint them back in. That's pretty easy. Okay. So now we have this really nice depth with these bubbles that are very close to us. I'm actually going to beef it all the way back up to 100. Um, we've got these mid bubbles that did not get turned down. That's why they're so bright. And we've also got our background bubbles. And they're turned down pretty low. We can turn them down even lower. And you just always are wanting to adjust these, right, so that they look further back. Perfect. Hit save. Last step, creating some sun rays from this light. Make a new layer. Oop, make sure it gets all the way to the top. Call it rays. Find your brush tool with white. And go find a very scattered, like that's almost scattered enough. I want even more if you have it, like this one. Scattered brush, you want a very scattered brush. So find your most scattered brush. You could always do some adjustments if you wanted. And, sorry my board just moved. And you're gonna paint these kind of all over. I don't want that to be bigger. Make it much bigger. And then once you do those, you'll come in, come up to filter, you'll look for a radial blur, change it up to 100% and move your light source up to your upper left corner. That's where our light is. Change it from zoom, spin to zoom. And you can leave this at good for now and hit OK. Notice we get a lot of really cool rays. We're going to change this down to soft light and turn down our opacity just a little bit. You don't want those to be so bright. And now you've got some light rays. Good job. Hit save. 